Hello everyone, welcome to Directions Live Online. My name is Laura Berman and I'm your host for today's session. Before we get started, just a reminder that you can ask questions at any time throughout the session and you can do this through the questions pane that you'll see on the GoToWebinar panel. Um, also, uh, we will be recording today's session and we will be making uh, the recording available shortly after today. So today we'll be continuing our kind of unofficial series that's been focusing on the ArcGIS apps. So we've already looked at Survey123 and also Collector for ArcGIS. Uh, but today we'll be looking at Workforce for ArcGIS, which is really the app that you call on when you want to organise and manage your field work. It also integrates seamlessly with the other field apps to create really, truly efficient field operations. And I'd like to introduce our presenter for today, who is Kim Jackaway from our Adelaide office. So Kim actually has a background, a really interesting background focused around um, oil and gas and water management and has worked on some really interesting projects over the years, including um, flood mitigation strategies in the UK, um, but also some spatial solutions around gas projects around Australia. But you may know him from his time in tech support and training. Um, in particular, Kim is, um, he presents a lot of the, the desktop courses. If you're also local to South Australia, then you um, may have met Kim when he's presenting technology updates to our local um, South Australian user community. But today, Kim will be focusing um, on workforce. Um, so I'll hand over to Kim now. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Laura. So hello and uh, welcome to Arc Workforce for ArcGIS. So Workforce for ArcGIS is used to efficiently design, plan, manage and assign work assignments to your mobile workforce in the field. It's designed to work on smart devices integrating with other ArcGIS apps so you can maximise efficiency and gain real-time awareness from the office to the status of the field assignments. So Workforce for ArcGIS is part of the apps group that is designed to optimise and util utilise Esri's existing field apps. This means it works seamlessly with other apps in the ArcGIS suite and plays a vital role in the field workflow. So this field workflow involves planning work in the office, coordinating your field crews, where Workforce comes into it, navigating your field crews to those assignments, capture data using our data collection apps, and this can all be monitored using in real time using our operations dashboard. So Workforce allows us to work efficiently and be assigned work to mobile workers from the field to the field from the office. And these tasks can be completed using one of Esri's mobile apps and the status of this assignment can be reported straight back to the office in real time. Workforce is part of our ArcGIS online organisation and integrates with ArcGIS apps such as Collector for ArcGIS, Server123 and Navigator for ArcGIS, allowing us to use our own maps and road networks. So this can be especially useful if we're working on large work sites or in mining operations where traditional road networks aren't covered. So there is no additional purchase or install needed for use Workforce for ArcGIS. It's all part of your ArcGIS online package. Now one of our clients that is currently using it is um, we have a local agribusiness client using Workforce and they use their Workforce to manage their crop inspections. So using Workforce for ArcGIS with integrated Esri apps, it allows them to keep in contact with the field from the office. So as new information comes in from varying different sources, they can assign this work to particular people out in the field without, without those people coming back in basically and speaking to them in the office. So they can get their notifications and they can keep working and they can use the Esri apps to basically process the task at hand. So inspect the crops. So let's have a look what we get as part of the Workforce for ArcGIS application. Workforce is made up of two parts, the web app and the mobile app. So from within ArcGIS Align, we can use the Workforce web application to create and configure Workforce projects. 
Now, Workforce Project contains multiple assignment types, which is the work that the field crews are likely to complete. We can configure these assignment types to utilise other mobile apps, such as Collector for ArcGIS, Survey123, Explore for ArcGIS and Navigator. And for ArcGIS to help us reach the assignment, basically. Within Workforce for ArcGIS, when we set up a project, we can add dispatches, so they're uh, your people working back in the office. And then we have our mobile workers, including any contact details that they have. So we can use Workforce to, to contact our people through the application and we can have all their details in there as opposed to just going straight to the phones. And this also works in the field as well. So we can see where our fellow colleagues are and we can contact them directly through the app. And we can also configure our maps and layers to be used in the field by our mobile workers. And this works back in the field, uh, back in the office, sorry, uh, for our dispatches, so we can see all the same data at the same time. So let's have a little look now at Workforce for ArcGIS. So we sign into Workforce for ArcGIS using our ArcGIS Online credentials, and that'll take us directly to a projects pane where we can see any projects that are in there, whether it be ours or other ones that are shared with us. So we're going to create a new project now. So this one's going to be for tree inspections. And I um, just want to give it a summary to let us know what it's all about. And that'll go off and create the project now. And it's going to create a, a few hosted feature layers and a couple of maps, which we'll see in a moment. So let's start. We have to build first our assignment types. So these are the jobs basically we're going to assign to those in the field. And we can have multiple assignment types. So I'm going to have two in here. One that's going to utilise Collector for ArcGIS and another one that's going to utilise Survey123. So they might be different tasks that are sent out to different people in the field. So now I want to add a few users there. Now you'll see initially I'm a dispatcher, I'm creating the project, so I'm already in there, but we want to add some mobile workers in there as well. So these are our field crews. Uh, and because we can give them some details, some contact numbers and stuff like that. This is what allows us to then contact them through the application. We'll just save these ones in there. Like I said, we can have multiple field crews and this is using our ArcGIS Online named users. So all those people in our organisation, we can then start adding them to our projects and assigning work to them. Now, once we've had some uh, workers, what we want to do now is integrate our other Esri apps into the project. So for this particular one, I'm going to use Collector, and I've already set up a Collector map, and I'm going to assign that to a particular task, which you'll see when we actually start seeing about tasks. So we have one here that's used to collect new trees. And what you'll also see in a moment too, is we can start passing through fields directly into Collector. So these will go into the hosted service. We don't have to type in our job ID each time. So I'm just going to set up a second one here for Survey123. Uh, and this is, again, using a predefined survey project that we've set up. And I assign that application to that particular task. So when that a task is then assigned to a worker, it will automatically then pick up Survey123. We can also have location tracking turned on. So this is when they're actually using the app we will be able to see where people are at and it allows other workers to see where their colleagues are at the same time. So you see now we've got our, our users set up, our dispatcher. We've also two maps were created when we created a project. So this is a dispatcher map that we'll be able to see in the field. So this will, you'll see in a moment that uh, it's created a two layers there, one to show where our workers are, another one to show where our assignments are. And we can also now add in our own data. So I'm going to add in some existing tree data. So then I can see where the assignments are going to be in relation to our trees that are in our survey already. At the same time, you also see there's a workers map. So this workers map is what you'll see on the mobile device. So not using the workforce web app, when you use the Workforce mobile app. So this is what our field crews see. 
you can see they can see where their fellow assignments, workers and assignments are. Now let's open a project and start assigning some assignments to it. So this will take us straight into our project window and you can see currently there's no assignments, but we can see who's online. So no one started any, any projects yet, so everyone's offline. We can see their contact details there, so we can contact them if need be. They'll also receive notifications on those phones automatically when we create an assignment. So if I create a new assignment here, I'm gonna assign it to the collect new trees uh, task that we set up earlier. And I can give that a location by simply clicking on the map if I know it is. I can use what three words, I can use a street address, or I can use a, a latitude, longitude if need be. Uh, I'm gonna give it a priority. This is a fairly low one. They've got a week to, to get the work done and we can set our time when it needs to be done. We can also give it a job ID now. And this is what's gonna pass directly through the collector in this, in this scenario. And um, they won't have to fill that out every time. We can use the global ID to do the same, same thing. Uh, we can add a description in of the work to be completed. And we can also add in attachments. So there might be PDFs or images or anything like that that we might wanna add to our field crews and let them see what's going on be another work order in itself. So we'll create this assignment. And you can see now that it's it's been created. We can go in there and edit it if need be. We can see who it's been assigned to and where the address of it is. So I just wanna create a second one now, but this one will be for our survey. Uh, so this assignment now, when it's carried out, it'll want to use survey one, two, three, as opposed to collector for ArcGIS. So it, it, it's for a different purpose. We can see it's using the same method to build. And again, we just had, need to add in a description for our field workers to know what they're doing out in the field. Uh, we can, again, add in any attachments if need be and we just need to give it a location. And there's two assignments quickly created. Now, we also get the mobile side of things as well. So for the mobile workers, there is Workforce for ArcGIS mobile app. And this is where they can view and complete their work assignments. So it allows them to receive notifications. And this is even if the app is, is operating in the background, they can get a notification on their phone to tell them that there's a new task that's been created for them. They can see their work into, into a uh, to-do list. So they can start sorting that list depending on the urgency of the assignment or the, the day that it's due or the time that it's received or even the distance from where it is. And they can also start using this app to notify the dispatchers if they've finished an assignment or taken a break or declined an assignment for whatever reason. And they can add and edit notes and add attachments much like when we set it up in the web app, they can do that to send back to the office. So also while they're using the mobile app and they've started a task, the app will start tracking their location. Again, even if it's running in, a lo in the background, it can track their location of where they are. So this will allow them to go on and use other apps to carry out the task, such as Collector or Survey123. And it also allows them to create a basically a uh, breadcrumb trail so they can check their movements and, and follow themselves throughout the assignment. They can also use those contact details that are attached to the mobile worker and then they can contact and they've got the, through the app, they can call people or message people that are in their area. So this uh, mobile app, it's, it's currently available for Apple and Android users. So you'll get it through your, your favorite store, the app store or the um, Android marketplace. And it's currently in beta for Windows users. So let's have a look at the mobile app. So we'll see we can open Workforce up directly and it will take us to our 
list because it's using our ArcGIS Online login. So I can see there's there's four tasks that have been created for me. Uh, I can start sorting this list depending on the date, the distance, the priority, the assignment type, because I've got uh, survey assignments in there and I've also got um, collector assignments in there. But once I select my assignment, it'll take me through to that actual particular job at hand, that task that needs to be done. Uh, you can see I can also use Navigator for ArcGIS, so I can navigate directly to the assignment from where I'm at. Where I'm at. Uh, again, you can use this with your own network if need be in your own map, so you don't have to use uh, the ones that come with the app. I, I can also, once I've started my assignment, I can change the the priorities of it um, and the status of it. So I can pause it if I go on a break. I can decline an assignment for whatever reason. Uh, and I can continue on. So once I've continued on, and this is a collector assignment, it'll take me straight through to collector. And you'll see that job ID that we set up when we created the assignment has been passed straight through to our feature service that we're using for our collector map. So I'll just add a few details in here for our survey. And you'll see, because once I started my assignment, it went green. And then when I finished my assignment, it tells them back in the office that it's been done. Now let's just have a quick look at this of how it works with uh, Survey123. Again, it was much like Collector, but this time because it was a survey task and Survey123 had been assigned or integrated with that particular task, that's the app that's going to use. That job ID again has been passed straight through to our survey form and uh, we can use survey123 as we normally would. So when that's, that's complete, we can then see how it looks for our dispatches back in the office. So this is now is back in the web app. So we're not using the mobile apps anymore and we can see the tasks that have been completed. We can see who's currently online and we can see the tasks that are still outstanding. Um, this is also fairly dynamic. So this is in near real time. So once somebody is in the field that started a task, you'll see the, the, the point, the symbol changes to tell me that the task has been started. And then once they finish a the survey, it's changed to green to tell me that it's it's been completed. It also will tell me if they've declined that straight away and I can go to that task and see why they've declined that job. So this one, they can't get access to the to the property, so they've declined that job. So what's coming with Workforce for ArcGIS? So the current release was uh, back in February, and this added the integration with Explore for ArcGIS as well. So beforehand, it was Survey123, Navigator, and collect the ArcGIS, but now we've got Explorer for ArcGIS. It also added the ability to load workers into projects. So in the example I showed before, I was, I was putting them in one by one, but we can now load in whole groups of workers. So if you've got a large field crews, you don't have to start selecting them one by one to put them into your project. It's also added the global ID field for app integration, so we can start tying it in with our existing data. So looking further forward to 8.1 when it's come out, some of the things we're looking at improving is, is battery improvement. So currently workforce, it's constantly running in the background and it's constantly consuming battery life as it's trying to track you. So they're looking at improving efficiency basically of the device. Uh, also the added ability for mobile workers to pick up unassigned work. Currently we assign work to field crews, but if they finish their work for the day and there's other jobs sitting there waiting to be started, they'll be able to assign that work to themselves and pick up that assignment while in the field, not relying on a dispatcher to do that. And also currently workforce relies on being constantly online. So at the moment, if you're offline, 
a message will display to tell you that you're offline and uh, you need to get back on the network. So we're looking at, at, at an occasionally connected support where we're falling in and out and the maps can update even though that you're offline, you know, where the connection to the web is intermittent. So how do I get Workforce for ArcGIS? Uh, if you're using it with ArcGIS online, you can just go straight to workforce.arcgis.com and log in with your ArcGIS online uh, details. If you have your own portal, you can download the Workforce for ArcGIS uh, application from MyEsri and then you can install it on your own servers. So you can download the mobile apps from either the Apple Store or Google Play and as I mentioned earlier, it is currently in beta for Windows. So it's, it's available for Windows, but it's currently in beta. And you also must be part of an ArcGIS organization. So these are for the level two users because you'll be editing uh, each services. So it's not open for public accounts, but it's all part of your ArcGIS online organization. So everybody that's got an ArcGIS online organization currently has access to Workforce for ArcGIS. There's no need to go out and purchase any more licenses or anything like that. So that's all I have for today for Workforce for ArcGIS. Um, I'm gonna hand you back over to Laura and she'll be able to answer any questions that you may have. Thanks, Kim. I probably will need your help with some of the questions, but I do have questions that have come through from, um, from our attendees today, which is great. So we actually had two people answer, ask this first question, um, both from Sri and um, also from Henry. And the question was around implementing workforce um, in a portal environment. So can you integrate workforce for ArcGIS with portal for ArcGIS? Yes, yeah, so as, as I sort of mentioned at the end there, you, you can download the workforce application from MyEsri and then you can install it as, as an application on your own own server and you can integrate it straight there. So it looks the same in portal as what it does, what I showed you using the ArcGIS online. Excellent. And I think you did also mention at the end there around named users. So I take it because yes. whoever's out in the field is actually creating data, they would they would need to be level two. That's correct. Um, yeah. And the dispatcher is going to have to be level two at least as well because they're creating the projects. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll have to, you're basically, you're editing hosted feature services in, in your portal. Okay, makes sense. Um, we have another question here from Anthony. He's asking, uh, with creating assignments, is there any problems with automating this through some form of integration? Uh, there is an, a workforce SDK out there and the agribusiness one that I, the example I gave earlier, they actually customise this to work with a web app builder. So they're not using the workforce for ArcGIS front end, basically as we're, as I showed in the in the demonstration. They've got their own web app and they're just using the, the ability to create those tasks and assignments in their in their own own application. So there is 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 that sort of I hit the hit the mark with that one or we asking about jobs to come in through some sort of system? That sounds good and I know I will make sure that um, I have Anthony's details so I'll yeah. make sure that you can connect just so uh, with Anthony afterwards so we can cover off anything else around that question. It was a really good question. Um, we've got another one that's really good. Um, so um, what is the maximum number of records that the hosted feature layers um, created in workforce um, can contain before there's a performance degrade? Is there any stats on that? I'm not sure about that. Um, no, I think that like any other hosted feature service, it, it will have a lot to do with our network and, and what it contains as well. Um, there, are, there are no limits basically, or there are no documented limits, um, but they can get, I've seen hosted feature services well into the hundreds of gigabytes uh, with attachments and stuff like that, but no, there is no definitive answer for that one, sorry. Okay. And we've just got um, one last question. And again, this is something um, I might need to check around this one as well. Um, can we integrate workforce for ArcGIS with SAP? 
that, that would be powerful. It does integrate, yes, it does integrate with, with some asset management systems. Yeah. I would have to get back to them whether SAP precisely or, or how that's done, but it does integrate with asset management systems currently. Okay, that sounds good. And sort of in, along the same vein, um, we've got um, one that's just popped through from Scott asking around um, CRMs. So something like synchronising with something like Oracle. So I think let's check those details. And um, yeah. Danielle and Scott, we'll get back to you because it should it should um, easily be done because there is integration through um, through ArcGIS for both SAP and something like Oracle. Uh, so just checking through on the workforce side. So I think that'd be another good presentation for the SDK and how it yeah. works. Thanks, Kim. I'll get you back soon then. No, I've got somebody else in mind that would be very good at that kind of stuff, I think. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, um, thank you. That Heaps of good questions. Um, and thanks, Kim. Um, it was thanks a really good presentation. Um, you don't see a lot around workforce, so I've learned a lot today, I have to say. Um, okay, so um, what's coming up next? So I've um, got a few that are coming up at the end of June. Um, we've actually got Simon Jackson who will be coming in um, and he'll be talking all around ArcGIS Enterprise. So um, we had a session, you know, a few months ago that was sort of looking at some of the latest, um, in the latest version of ArcGIS and there has been some changes with ArcGIS Enterprise. So we wanted to have a really practical session about you know, if you're thinking of moving across, you know, what considerations do you need around that space? Um, we'll then have Gordon coming up early July to talk about GDA 2020. Um, so I think there have been a couple of um, blog posts and things around there, but I think just be good to have a discussion um, around, you know, what you need to think about as you're planning um, to, um, to migrate across um, to GDA 2020. Um, and also just a chance to ask Gordon any questions that you might have. I know he's across this um, very well. And then lastly, um, we'll be having um, a little update after we've got the Esri User Conference coming up in San Diego in early July. Um, so we'll just have a bit of a wrap up um, from the team who are heading over there um, just to cover off on you know anything that we need to know um, straight away, basically. So um, lots to register for. Um, as always, love to know what you want to hear about. So let me know. There'll be a survey that pops up um, just shortly after the session. Um, once again, this recording will be available. And in fact, we'll email it to you early next week, so you'll have that on hand. Uh, but for now, I just want to say thanks again, Kim, and thanks to everyone for joining us and for all your questions. Uh, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks um, for the next Directions Live Online. Thanks. <laughs>